Hi friends, it's Malachi Dawson. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you're here with me today. Let's get into today's video. Alright friends, I'm so excited for today's video because this is something that genuinely I get very passionate about whenever I talk about. So today's message is called this, the reward for your obedience. So this is something I've seen in my own life, I've seen it in my parents' life, I've seen it in friends' life, and I've also read about it in the Word of God. So I'm so excited. Let's get into today's video. So the other day I was here at the church and we were having a prayer meeting. So I walked into, I walked out of my office um, down this hallway and I went into to the prayer room and um, immediately as soon as I walked in the Lord said this tell my people the goodness of my ways so I was literally still walking into the room so I put my stuff down and was like okay God and I just felt him lay this message on me so let's just go ahead and hop into everything that he's been teaching me about so whenever I talk about this there is a reward for your obedience if you read in the Old Testament which I'm in Bible college and we have been in um, just learning about these different things um, about that whenever the king was obedient to the Lord they would win all of their battles they would take spiritual territory and they would literally be like the number one kingdom and then if a, that king died and a new king came in, which would most likely be his son or his son-in-law, something like that, whenever he would come up, if he would be disobedient to God, then they would lose all their battles. They would lose all spiritual territory and just bad things would happen. Most likely plagues or they would become overthrown. Just a bunch of different stuff would happen. So basically what happened in this cycle was if you were obedient to God, you would win all of these battles. You would take all this territory. A lot of stuff would happen. So if you read about that in all the Old Testament, you learn that whenever you're obedient to God, it literally affected everyone. It affected your wife, your children, also the entire kingdom. Like it was very serious if you were obedient to God or not. So whenever I think about that in my life, whenever I've been obedient to God, he's always blessed me. Whenever he opens up doors and says, okay, walk through it. If I were to be disobedient, I would find myself regretting that decision. And there's been times where I didn't listen to God. And I had to suffer the consequence for that because then I was walking out of his will for my life. Now, the Lord wants to redeem you. So if you have been disobedient to him, you know what? It's time for you to repent and it's time for you to get back in the saddle and start being obedient to him. You can start today. Like literally, you can start today. There is a reward for your obedience and goodness in the will of God for your life. And so I believe that whenever you're a Christian, you should not be a sad, emotional Christian that's always down. I think that you should be walking in the fullness of God all the days of your life. Because I believe that prosperity gospel isn't a thing prosperity gospel is the gospel like god intended his people to prosper we are not supposed to be some broke jokes that just don't do anything listen we were intended for the blessing of god that's that's our inheritance god wants to bless us god wants to see his children prosper i mean we serve he literally rules and reigns over everything. He created everything. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Like I could go on and on just about his goodness and that he is over all. He literally puts his foot, and this the earth is a footstool for him. Like everything is his. He created everything. Like we, we are like tiny ants, smaller than that. And he still cares about us. Literally, we serve that powerful of a God why why would he want us to not prosper no he wants to bless his children he wants to bless the children that are obedient to him so let's talk about it today i want to talk about the simplicity of the gospel really really fast whenever you abide in the lord which is in john chapter 15 whenever you're abiding in the lord which i'm going to describe it means to remain in god this is john chapter 15 i'm going to go ahead and just read the majority of the chapter to you this is something that has deeply changed the trajectory of my life it's changed the way i thought and the word of god is supposed to be transforming to our minds so whenever you read it it's supposed to change you it's supposed to transform the way that you think so let's read this word okay john chapter 15 verses 1 here's what it says i am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful you are already clean because of the word i've spoken to you remain in 
me and I will also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like the branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, my word shall remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as the Father, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remained in his love. Literally through all of that, you just heard that whenever we choose to remain in God, we bear his fruit and he prunes us, which is sanctification. And whenever I keep on saying abide, I feel like the word abide has become my whole personality. Literally, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm always abiding. I'm always at some scenic place encountering God with his glory. Like, yeah. So I'm always using the word abide because abide means to remain strive for the presence of God you don't have to work to try to find the presence of God if you remain in it and that means creating an environment that welcomes in the presence of God God comes where he's welcome so you need to create an environment which welcomes God and if you say well I mean I live in a dorm room or I live with other people okay here's what you need to do we're on this earth to lead people to Jesus. So let's say you're in college and you're in a dorm room with someone that's literally crazy. And they like party, they don't believe in God, or if they do, they're not vocal about it. Listen, friend, there is something that is on your life that shifts atmospheres. Whenever you spend time with God, you carry the Holy Spirit. Whenever you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you carry the Spirit of God that can change any atmosphere. You have to believe that you carry authority. Whenever you have joined your life with the Holy Spirit, you carry the authority of God within you. You can change atmospheres and you cannot change anyone, but the Holy Spirit can. So whenever you are sitting down talking to someone and they're a little crazy and you ask the Holy Spirit to give you the words to say he will he will work through you you get them radically saved and then create an environment I'm telling you over the 19 years Malachi Dawson has been alive I have seen some of the craziest turn into in love with God throwing down all of their um, idolatry and sin cycles all that stuff God can do that that is the God of the Bible that is the God of today so don't make excuses Make action and get those people saved. Start creating an environment for God. If you live at home, you can create your room. You can create your space and environment for God. Play worship music. Get out anything that is not from God. In um, the book of Exodus, it talks about getting rid of your idols. You know, things can be your idols. Your phone, your phone can be an idol. If there's something on this phone that is causing you to stumble, you can get a flip phone, baby. They're like actually not that expensive at Walmart. Like seriously, or AT and T, wherever. I think Walmart's cheaper, but like I think it's fifteen to thirty dollars for the cheaper ones. You can get that. Like seriously, if you need to break a break from this, do it. Take the break, or delete some social media, or delete YouTube, or delete whatever apps are causing you to stumble. Uh, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook. What else is there? Be real. I don't know. Um, whatever is causing you to stumble, get rid of it. It's okay to to make some uncommon decisions. Because deleting social media in a world that is controlled by social media it seems weird. But do what you need to do to welcome in the environment of God. I don't know how I got off there, but let's get back into it. Okay, so whenever you're abiding in the Lord, whenever you're spending time with God, you begin to thrive in every area of your life. I truly believe that. Here's how I know. Here are three things. The first thing is this. Whenever you're abiding in the Lord, you begin to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. If you don't know what the fruits of the Spirit are, don't you worry. I'm going to read them to you right now. So if you have your Bibles and you don't know what the fruits of the Spirit is, it's okay. We're going to flip to Galatians, and I'm going to read it to you really quick. Galatians is right before Ephesians, and it's in the New Testament, if you don't know where that's, where that's at. Here's Galatians. I'm going to read it to you. Here is, let's start off in verse 17. This is chapter 5, verse 17. Here's what it says. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not able to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. 
They contain sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So everything it just listed, if you live unto the flesh, that's what you're going to have in your life. Like that's what your life is going to look like. So obviously whenever it says witchcraft, idolatry, sexual immorality, you're like, I don't struggle with those things. Good. But it also says jealousy, hatred, fits of rage. Listen, sometimes your girl can get in some fits of rage. So I have to check myself because whenever I read this, the conviction of the Holy Spirit came all over me because... Sometimes I get in some fits of rage. I got to get over those anger issues. But listen, if you carry those things, you're living unto the flesh and you're letting your flesh control your life. Because if I were to act out on my anger, I'm letting the flesh win. And so I have to humble myself and say, no, I'm not going to let the flesh win. I'm going to walk in the spirit. And here is the fruits of the spirit. Let me read them to you. So in opposite of all the things I just read here... I rebuke you, Satan. Okay, I just dropped literally everything I was holding. Okay, here we go. Here's the fruits of the Spirit, my friends. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Jesus have crucified the flesh with all of its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become a conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So listen, my friends. Let me grab my stuff that I literally just all threw on the floor by accident. Whenever you abide in God, you walk in the fruits of the Spirit. All those things I just listed, you begin to walk in. So... If you want to work on focusing on those things, here's what your girl did. I wrote them out on a big piece of like poster board and I have it pinned in my room. So every single day, whenever I wake up, I begin to read of those things, love, joy, peace, all of them. And I say, you know what? I, I have the Holy Spirit within me. I'm going to walk in those things. Whenever I can't find joy in this world, I'm going to call on the joy of from the Lord because that's something that I can't naturally produce. But because I'm connected to God and I have the Holy Spirit living within me, the Spirit of God is going to produce joy out of my life. Amen. Okay. Number two is this. Whenever you abide in God, I don't have to fight. He is my defender. Period. I'm not even going to go into that. Third thing is this. Whenever I'm abiding in God, I don't have to carry the burden I don't have to carry weight anymore because God said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So that means I don't have to carry the weight of my old sin because God actually sent his son Jesus to die on a cross to free us inwardly and outwardly. So what I mean by that is I have a whole message on that. If you go on my YouTube, you can probably find it. It's a little bit down because I preached it about a year ago. But God wants to give you freedom outwardly from sin cycles, but also inwardly. He wants to free you from the bondage of your old sin because you weren't made to carry the weight of that. Because you know what the Bible says? His yoke is easy and its burden is light. Okay, back to what I'm talking about. There is a reward for your obedience. I'm going to list three quick Bible stories. The first one is this. So there was a story in the Bible where Jesus was at a wedding. And at this wedding, they had run out of wine and they were completely out. And so Mary, the mother of Jesus, said, called Jesus in there and said, Jesus, we have an emergency. You need to do something. We're out of wine. There's no more left to serve. And all of the attendees, I guess you could, well, not attendees, the people that were working in the kitchen, they were just standing there like, what do we do? And Mary looked at looked at the, the workers and said, do whatever he tells you to do, talking about Jesus. So Mary, the mother of Jesus, knew that if the people that were working in the kitchen were obedient to God, were obedient to Jesus, there would be a reward. And the reward was what she was looking for. So she told him, do whatever he says to do, because there is a reward whenever you're obedient to Jesus. Amen. Second one is this. So we're going to go to Luke and I'm going to read this to you guys. It's in Luke chapter five. Luke is also in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it's the third uh, book in Luke chapter five, verses three through six. I'm going to read it to you. He got onto one of the boats and what the boat that he got onto was belonging to Simon Peter. Well, Simon at the time, but later he would be known as Peter. So Simon slash Peter and asked him to put the boat out 
a little way from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put, in, put your nets into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night, haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down my nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled and their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled the boat. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Okay, so what happened was Peter was a fisherman. He'd fished all of his life. And he had been fishing all night because he needed, you know, the finances because he got finances whenever he fished. He would sell the fish and that's how he'd make his money for his family. And so uh, Peter was one of those people where they were being heavily taxed by the Romans. The Romans were stealing the um, Jews money through taxes. And so he had a lot of taxes to pay for him and his family. So that's why he was fishing all night. So he was fishing at this time and Jesus had come onto the scene. So keep in mind, he'd fished all night, hadn't caught anything. And so he's pretty down about it. Well, Jesus shows up and says, hey, let's go fishing. Put out your nets and you're going to catch something. And he's kind of like, I've been fishing all night. Like, you don't understand. I've been fishing all night. But you know what? I'll just do it. Why not? And he catches the most fish he's ever caught in his entire life. It filled up two boats. So much of the boat started sinking. Think about how big boats are. And I'm sure it wasn't like the Titanic, like a huge boat, but like a pretty good sized boat. And it began to sink. That is a lot of fish. And he definitely was going to get a lot of money for that. So he was literally blown away. But there is a reward for your obedience. I mean, come on. And so later on, after they get back on shore, Jesus actually calls Peter to be his disciple. And of course, you know, he says yes. And we hear amazing stories about Peter all throughout the um, New Testament. But there was a reward for Peter's obedience in the moment. He got all those fish and he, he got he was gonna get those monies he was gonna get the money for his family. But there was an even more reward that came later. So there is an immediate reward and there's also a continued reward for being obedient to God. He began to be his disciple and walk with Jesus, which is the greatest reward ever. I mean, come on. Okay, so the last thing I want to read to you is in Proverbs chapter 2. Now, this is in the Old Testament, so you're going to have to flip all the way to Proverbs. So we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 2. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as if it was silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Here's what the Lord says. Kingdom wisdom, wisdom from God, is completely in polar opposite to our wisdom. Because I can be wise naturally, but I can never be truly wise until I've asked for God's kingdom wisdom. And so what's that saying is, God is saying, my son, if you seek for my wisdom, wisdom from the kingdom, wisdom from heaven, then I'll give it to you. But you have to seek for it as if it was hidden treasure. Like you have to put value on it. So whenever we treasure the voice of God, he'll speak freely. That's what that means. And so blessed are those who obey quickly. Whenever we are obedient to God, because we've, we've sought out his wisdom and we have treasured his voice, there will be a reward whenever we listen to his voice. The way that we have to think about it and you have to let God sanctify you until your mindset becomes this, is this. I have to decide I want and I desire God's plan over my plan. God's will over my will. And why, why do I wholeheartedly believe that? Because I lived living unto my will for a long time, for a lot of years of my life. And my will left me empty, broken, and in bondage. And only Jesus set me free from that. So now I rely on God's will. And because I've relied on God's will, I've walked in complete freedom and I've walked in complete joy. And there's been so many blessings and incredible things come from that because I sought out God's wisdom and not my own. I don't lean on my own understandings because I know that my own understandings won't get me very far. But God's understandings will completely lead me to my purpose and accomplish my purpose and then I'll get to be up in heaven with him one day. Yeah. Okay. Here's one of the last things I want to talk about is this. Before you are obedient to God, there has to be a connection to him. You cannot be obedient to someone that you're not connected to. 
whenever you spend time with the Lord, He tells you what to do. He tells you what to let go of. He tells you what to pick up. You have to be connected to Him. And it's the greatest thing ever. There is no greater joy than to be connected to God. To be, the, to be connected to the creator of everything. To be connected to God. There's no greater thing. And yes, I know we've been talking about rewards and because we're obedient. But the greatest reward is Him. The greatest reward is being with Him. Being with God in His presence. There's a lot of things in life to enjoy. There's beautiful sunsets. There's ocean waves. There's the sound of rain. There's um, ice cream on a summer day. There's hanging out with your friends. There's there's uh, long car drives with the windows down. There's coffee. There's coffee. There's Alani's. There's a lot of things in this world to enjoy. But there is no, nothing greater. There's nothing greater than being with the Lord. I even think that whenever you spend time with the Lord, you begin to treasure everything else more. Like, I've always loved water, the sound of water, sound of waterfalls, uh, the ocean, things like that. I've always loved stuff like that. But because I spend time with the Lord, I begin to see things in a new perspective. It's like everything is like bursting with color now. It's like, it's like you just you're on maximum 10. Like you see everything through a 10, but whenever you spend time with the Lord, you see everything on a hundred. And you just appreciate everything so much more whenever you spend time with the Lord. The greatest reward you get is to be with God and to find the pleasure of God. There's no greater thing. I don't think I've ever been so joyful than whenever I'm standing in the middle of the will of God and I know that he's pleased with me and you feel the pleasure of the Lord because you're doing exactly what he told you to do. That's the greatest reward. So... I hope this video encouraged you guys. I love you all so much. And if you want to get connected, go down in, this, in the description box down below. All the ways you can, get, you can get connected are on there. So I love you guys so much. I hope this video encouraged you. Bye.